Hello everyone, Neil Tappin here from Golf Monthly and welcome to this video in which we are looking at the five most important golf lessons. If you're looking to make some big improvements to your game this year, this video should certainly help. Uh, everything from a driver through to the shorter clubs in your bag, these are some really simple, uh, classic pieces of advice that will help you play better golf, help you shoot lower scores. The advice in this video comes from Alex Elliott. He's one of the PGA pros we, we work with. His advice is really simple and effective and is definitely gonna help you shoot lower scores in 2020. Let's head out now onto the golf course at West Hill and find out what number five on the list is. The first one we're gonna look at is probably the most important and that's, Alex, how do you stand to the ball with an iron in hand? It's the most crucial part. Of yeah, the, I mean, the we game, probably hit really. our most shots around here apart from putting. Um, so I, I kind of like to, the simplest term is stand to it athletically. OK, if you think this golf club's actually traveling at a relatively fast speed, I mean, upwards of like 90 miles an hour for some people, potentially, we need to be in some capacity quite athletic to be able to maintain good positions, good control. So as our first point, make it feel athletic. OK, what do you mean by that? <laughs> so I guess if imagine you were in the gym, I would like and you were going to say a deadlift or you're going to do some sort of exercise, you would have certain points which would be are kind of our criteria. Yes. So in the golf swing, I've got kind of a simple routine that if you were a complete beginner, this is exactly the kind of routine I would like you to go through. Once you've got hold of the golf club and grip, which is a slightly different topic, I would always stand over the golf ball with my legs straight to begin with and, and the sole of the club pointing towards the sky. Okay. So now I've done this, I would lower the club until it runs parallel to the ground. So I've not moved my body, I've not moved any part of me just to yeah. lower this club. Everyone can stand like this. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You're not in the gym now. No. So from here, all I would do is imagining like I'm taking a bow or I'm like a crane. So my hips are the pivot point and I'm feeling like I'm pivoting from my hips until the club hits the ground. From here, slightly bend the knees. So I'm almost feeling like I'm perching on a kitchen stool, perching on a bar stool, or if you're a gym person, almost like I'm stood in a deadlift. Ready to, ready to, ready to go, and exactly. I think th th this is so crucial. These are the building blocks for a good golf swing. If you get the posture right, ultimately, that's really gonna make a big difference to the quality of your ball striking, isn't it? Definitely, and the quality of being able to repeat the swing. It's, am it's amazing how people kind of start playing golf, don't take any lessons and they have their own kind of posture and it is a very, very big influence into what they do with the golf club. Yes. Very over, very upright, will have different influences on our golf swing. What the swing is doing. Exactly. So then, uh, following on from this, where should the ball be in relation to your stance? Rule of thumb, this is something that I would use if I'm not going to hit a lower ball flight and there are different situations, but my rule of thumb is that I like to keep the ball position starting in the middle of my pitching wedge and working half a ball forward as I go all the way up to driver. So half a ball forward for nine, another half a ball forward for eight, seven, six, and then until I get to driver, which will cover Yes, a little bit later in the video. Okay, Alex, so, so hit one for us and just talk about how you're getting yourself okay. in position. So taking my grip, lowering the club till it runs parallel to the ground, keeping my legs straight, tilting forwards, slightly bend the knees, shuffling, keeping that same balance point so I'm feeling like my weight is going just short of the balls of my feet. So just, just past my logo here. And this gives me a really athletic point to feel athletic through the golf ball, but also maintain my swing. Beautiful, and you'll notice just how nicely parallel Alex has set his feet, his hips, his shoulders to uh, the club face alignment, getting those feeling as if you're on a train track and getting exactly. that posture right. You're gonna notice that you should start to uh, strike the ball better and the overall shape of your swing should be just right. So the next lesson is about pitching. And Alex, this is an area where golfers can save themselves an awful lot of shots by being good at pitching. Definitely. But what are the keys to get it right? For me, there's two keys associated around setup. And then I like to kind of use simple feelings in the swing to almost help people to have guidelines towards. Yes. I always, I always say like you write stuff down in pencil because you can rub it out. Almost kind of that effect. Okay, fine. So in terms of pitching, what I like to see is point number one is a narrower stance. Okay. So we're, we're trying to hit a shorter, more controlled shot toward the target. So if we compare that to a driver, which we're looking for distance, then relatively we need a narrower stance. Fine. So narrower stance, 
And then for me, this is the biggest thing which I think people sort of slightly forget sometimes, that I like to feel like I pull my left foot back, but I keep my shoulders parallel to my ball to target line. So we spoke about tram lines before and tra yes. train tracks. I'm trying to feel the shoulders stay parallel, but the hips are slightly open. And why do you do that? Why is it important to feel like you're slightly open? Two reasons, really. Number one, feeling that it helps me swing it a little bit shorter on the way back because it limits my hip turn. Okay. But then also, you know, at impact, we all see the top players very open with the hips and this allows you to get in that position. Fine, because it's such a short shot. You, it, can exactly. be, it can be easy not to clear the hips properly through the ball. Exactly, exactly. It be a little bit scoopy, so it okay. helps with that. Okay, fine. So, um, all right. Anything else that we need to think about? Final thing I like to feel, and this is associated with actual swing and something that you could maybe try when you hit your shot, is make the club feel light. Okay. So if I said here, and I picked up the shot with one hand, so if I'm a right-handed player, pick it up in your left hand, and left-handed player, pick it up in your right hand, is that if I was to swing it back, the club feels light around this position. Yes. It now feels very heavy. I've got a strain down the forearm here and it now feels very heavy this way. I mean, those two are too extreme. Fairly extreme, you're not <laughs> yeah. going to be in that position, but you no. might be slightly off and you will notice the difference between where it's light and where it's heavy, right? Exactly, so if we apply that now to our setup with the stance, weight left, make the club feel light, make the club feel light, it allows you to help with better contact. Okay, go on then, hit a little shot for us there. So in, narrow stance, pull the left foot back, weight left, shoulders parallel to your ball to target line, make the club feel light. Lovely, and one thing I would say is that if you are practicing your golf, devote some time to pitching in every practice session you have. It will really pay off. These are the scoring clubs. If you can hit the ball closer to the flag from inside 100 yards, you will definitely shoot lower scores. Okay, so the next one on our list is chipping. And I think, Alex, it's fair to say that the coaching around chipping has evolved slightly over yeah. the years, hasn't it? I remember when I was a junior, I was taught, put the ball back in your stance, hit down on it a bit, but it's not the same now, is it? No, I mean, I think there's still always a time and a place for that kind of chip with like maybe an eight iron, five iron, where you really want to get the ball rolling like a putt very quickly. But I think now it's almost gone to the opposite end of the spectrum. Use the bounce, less forward shuffling, and that's the way people are being taught now. Okay, so those are the sort of technical terms, yep. but in, in, in sort of layman's terms, in basic terms, what, what are we trying to do here? I think we're trying to stop the lean edge digging for most right, people, because okay. like you say, in the traditional way is ball back, a lot of forward shuffling, and all that does is it just makes the leading edge very, very pronounced. Make it pronounced, more likely to duff it, more likely to dig, or the vice versa, more likely to try and scoop it into right, the air. fine. Okay, so how do you, how do you create that then? Two things, set up, and a nice analogy to actually have in the actual shot. Okay, fine. So talk about the setup then. So setup, I would like most people to have a middle ball position. Okay. Very similar to the pitching aspect, middle ball position. And then I like to feel that my shoulders are parallel to my ball to target line, but my hips are open. Slightly okay? open. Yeah. Yeah, so same thing as pitching, you're presetting that impact position. Exactly. Yeah. And from here, I like to feel that my hands are on the golf ball, not ahead of the golf ball. So really, I'm not allowing this forward shuffling too much because any time I do that, I'm closing the loft down, but also the leading edge is coming in. Yeah, and you're not going to be using the bounce. Um, fine, so, so then what's the analogy that you, you mentioned there about creating that really, I guess, smooth impact? So you're not making a massive yeah. divot, are you? You're trying to brush the ground. It's like we're trying to bruise the ground is what we're trying to do. Uh, the analogy that I use is wheels down. So if you're on a plane, we'd hopefully like to see it be a very smooth wheels down landing. We wouldn't want to see that the club crash landed or the plane crash landed, or we don't like to be on one that aborts a landing. I really like to get a feeling, and I would have a few practice swings with this, just trying to feel like the wheels of your plane are the bounce of your club. Yes. So can we get the wheels to just touch down? Adopt that setup, ball in the middle, weight left and hips open, but then get the wheels of the plane just to touch down. Okay, good. Well, this it. is not an easy <laughs> shot, but I think it's fair to say you're going to have to play it for us. Okay. Alex. So I address the ball, ball in the middle of my stance, pull my left foot back, weight left, feeling of the wheels down. Very good. And do you know what's good, good about it, I think? And it's something that I've noticed the more I try and do yep. it in my game, you can get away with those little heavy strikes or little thin contacts. Like that you one get there, really. With, don't you? Yeah, by just 
allowing the bounce to work, it does what it says on the tin. <laughs> it yeah. allows the club to bounce and you'll almost hit a, a good duff. I think if you look at all of some of the top chippers, and I remember going to a lesson once and this coach said to me, like, it's not about how good your good shot is, it's how bad your good shot is. Yeah. And for me here is if you can get the wheels just a touch down, your margin error is much bigger. Much bigger. So if you can put that into your game, your chipping will improve and your scoring will definitely get better. Okay, so the next one on our list relates to rhythm. And rhythm is that secret ingredient that turns a good swing into properly good golf shots. Uh, it's something that every golfer needs to focus on. But Alex, what's the advice? How do, you, how do you get a good rhythm? I think if we just look at players like Ernie Els, Lee Westwood, two like kind of like iconic players with great rhythm. But I, I think this is probably something from my own experience when I used to play a little bit, is having a song, a mantra, a saying just means that I can almost touch and use every single time. Right, okay, go on. So I'm going to be controversial here. I'm a City fan. <laughs> um, so what I try and think is when I'm over the golf ball, within my practice, within my routine, is feeling that I've got Sergio Aguero. So I've almost got two stages, one for the back, one for the through. Yes, and what's interesting watching Alex do that there is that it just enables you just that complete that backswing yeah. and just it means that often what happens i think is the transition between backswing and downswing gets a little bit aggressive Sharp, definitely yeah and, and and this stops that from happening yeah i think, I think it's two things do people get anxiety sharp wanting to hit the ball wanting to hit it far and then almost feeling like they come off balance how many times do we hear people say oh i swung at that too hard yes I think that's when they've got their focus on hitting the ball and on a technical aspect rather than having sergio Aguero. I mean, it almost feels like I'm pausing at the top. I'm not going to. Yeah, that's... and the downswing will naturally be faster than the backswing. Exactly. Okay, fine. So exactly. hit a couple for us there. Okay. And all I would do is, I'll say this one out loud, but I'll just have it going on through your head. So, Sergio Aguero. Beautiful shot. Lovely. Now, rhythm is one of those ingredients that that's what separates sometimes a good day from a bad day on the golf course it can be something as simple as rhythm and just devoting a little bit of time to it in practice could make all the difference okay so number one on our list is driving if you want to play golf to a good level you need to be able to hit the driver well you need to be able to find the fairway with it alex what's the the keys with driver and how is it different to what you're trying to do with an iron i think the first thing we've got to realize is the concept change between them if we imagine this is our ground with an iron we're looking for that ball and turf contact so on a trap man and numbers we'd look for a downwards hit right so you're hitting down on the ball right? exactly with it with a driver we're looking to hit it on the up so our bottom of our arc actually happens before the golf ball right so slightly on the upswing with the driver all sounds pretty simple and it's actually once you've got it in your head that idea you're already on the right path definitely but how do you create that upswing without making major changes to the swing itself because you see a lot of people that really try and yes hit exactly it on the lean back on it and that can cause problems i think right? before we go into that it's just important like i think a lot of the european tour and pga tour players do actually hit it on the down sometimes okay but i think they're all aspiring to hit it on the up because that's where they can be their most efficient in their okay. actual shots Fine. So how do you so how do you get yourself into a position to do that? So setup is my first and foremost. It's got to be good because it doesn't. If you if it's not, it doesn't allow you to get in the correct position. Okay. You have to manipulate it, and it almost looks a little bit false. Yes. So if we go through the full driver setup, so I like to start with my feet together, and then I just move my right foot. This then allows me to make sure I've got my ball position correctly in the right spot. Exactly in the right spot. Having the ball up anyway, it means you're hitting it later in your arc, so there's more chance of hitting it on the up. So yes. That's gonna be your first point, which is really gonna help you do that. But first and foremost, I this is where for me it, it really happens. If we put, once you've got into our goal posture, put your driver in between your, your chest and just feel like you tilt until your driver taps you on the heel. Okay, good. If you Simple. can then maintain that position, and then we're now in an opportunity to help us hit it on the upwards arc with two points, one with a set of our shoulders, but also with our ball position up in our stance. And I guess by doing these things, you're, you're making all the adjustments at address so that you don't have to make any adjustments during exactly. the swing itself. Exactly. So keeping it dead simple, it should be something that everybody... Definitely. I mean, I think one thing I would say is putting the driver in there is probably not something that's quite simple out on the golf course. All I do on the golf course and tell people when they come for a lesson is, look for the logo look for the dimples on the back of the ball because that'll get your head slightly behind the ball but most importantly 
the shoulders set. Okay, correctly. fine. And final question then for you, Alex. How high should you be teeing the ball? This is going to be, I, I depending on the shot, but in general terms, I like to have half a ball above the face. Fine. But if, if you were to play around with me, I kind of play around with my tee height, depending on what shot I'm trying to hit. Okay. I tend to tee it a bit lower if it's my fairway finder, tee it a little bit higher if I'm trying to maximise it. Going back to that being a bit more efficient hitting it on the up, higher a tee it, the more opportunity I've got to hit on the up. The lower a tee it, the feel like a little bit more of the squeezier shot comes out of me. Right, fine, which is which makes perfect sense. But let's ju just hit the um, the normal... Yep, so that's half a ball above the face. Yes, one for us. And then I'm in, looking for the logo. Beautiful. Ball has not moved, just gone absolutely <laughs> dead straight. Uh, well, if you can follow Alex's tips, you can do that a little bit more often. And these are the bits that you, every golfer can do. You can stand to the ball correctly every single time. If you do, you might just hit a few more shots like that one. So there you have it. That was our list of the five most important golf lessons. Uh, guys, if you like the video, please do hit the like button and also comment below. What do you think of Alex's tips is gonna make the biggest difference to your game? And is there anything you've done in your game uh, that you want to share here? We'd be really interested to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.